we are in the kitchen now, and I'm sure over the years you've definitely bought a jar of pickles or sauerkraut from the store before, right? Of course, I always have a jar of pickles. But did you know that you can actually make these things at home and it's really not that difficult? Kirsten Shockey is the author of Fermented Vegetables and it's celebrating its 10th anniversary. She is here with me now with a recipe for a miso pickling paste. Kirsten, welcome back to New Day. Thank you, thanks and for having me. Thanks for sharing with us this really, really unique thing. So this is miso pickling beds, is that what you said? Yeah, and it's, it's a really traditional Japanese way to preserve or quick pickle. And, and we've got some, some examples here. You can, you can do this so, for years. Wait, how long is, what is this and how long has it been pickling? This is some um, radish and it's been in there for over two years. Should I eat it? Can I eat it? Yeah. Okay. Go for it. All right. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. It's not fun and crunchy. Mm. It's still crunchy after two all the after all these years. After all these years, yeah. And then here's something that has been. It's a just whoops. It's cucumber that's been in like white miso for just a few days. Okay, this is just a few days versus two years. Mm hmm. Mm. Isn't that good? They're both good in yeah. different ways. Totally. Oh my gosh, See? I love this. And okay, two years. But you said quick pickling. What is the difference between like regular pickling and quick pickling? So. Quick pickling is usually, so to pickle something mm -hmm. is to put acid on something. Yeah. But uh, fermentation pickling is to allow the microbes to create the acid. The lactobacillus um, bacteria creates the acid. Now miso already has lactobacillus in it. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of by um, bypassing that process and the miso is getting that lactobacillus in there right away. Okay. And it's starting to break down the carbohydrates, which is part of what makes it good for your gut health. And then it's also adding all this delicious flavor and preserving it. So let me share, <laughs> let, me, let me see if I get this right. So when you, type, like when it's fast pickling, you're type, pouring in that acid, you're kind of forcing that chemical reaction where this is kind of more of a natural process by which the lactobacillus eats the carbohydrates, hence the sugars as well, and then mm -hmm. makes and it this perfect kind of food? Yeah, now the thing with a, a pickling bed, like mm -hmm. especially if you're doing this, like you've put, let's say, some cucumbers in here, okay. and, and you're gonna peel these out for dinner okay. tonight. All right. Not a lot has happened compared to say, that guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. or compared to sauerkraut. You know, it's, yes. it's, it's how long it's been in there is how much of those carbohydrates okay. are gonna be consumed. So this is the white miso, right? This is the white miso. And this is just a, a darker miso and... You're just gonna get different flavor. Okay, and how long have these two been in there? Uh, these are overnight. So this these is are like just... These are like those ones I tried. Uh, those were like three days and these okay. are overnight. Okay, right. well let me try an overnight one then. I mean, while I'm doing it. Mm. That's good. So when you get the saddle out of the miso, you just throw away the rest of the miso? Or? No, you keep the miso. You can do this multiple times. Look at that. Okay, well, let's so you just take all these guys out, use them up, so good. and then, um, yeah, do it again. All right, so how do I do this now? Okay, so all you're going to do is you're going to mix a little bit of mirin okay. um, in there, about three tablespoons. Of this? Of, of this, Of the mirin okay. in there. Sorry. And then... Oop. Comes out very easily. <laughs> okay. Oop. And Let's put a little bit of that back in there. And then you're gonna put that the miso in there. All and of just it. Mix. Yep. So what is this about a about it's a cup? Maybe about a cup. Yeah. Okay. And you don't need the mirror necessarily, but it's nice because it makes it a little creamier. Does exactly. Okay. So it'll take you a just, minute to get that mess. Just easily, just so <laughs> easily, so I don't make a mess. I make a mess all the time, Kirsten. Like, that's my big problem here on set. My <laughs> producers love me for it. Oopsie, I already See, did it. See, that's real. Um, that's how this we is, all cook. This is true. <laughs> all right, so as I'm mixing this up, what, so you have to get though, like when you're slicing these things, you wanna make sure they're really sliced thin, right? You know, it depends what you're after. So for example, I've got um, these, these little stems and they're just kale stems. So this is like oh. zero waste here. And this is what they look like after a couple days. And then they can kale be- Kale stems. Yep. I would see, this and is, there's, this is this another is thing. This is a zero no waste, waste, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so um, now you've got these little crunchy salty bits to put on top of a soup, on top of a salad. 
You know, instead hmm. of bacon bits, you've got kale oh. bits. Isn't that great? Okay, that's <laughs> that's great idea. So if you do nothing else, you can use okay. one of these as a, you okay. know. So once I've got this mixed up, then obviously I, I cut these veggies. Yep. yep, just cut them in there. In thin slices? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you're just going to dig them in there, or so just, just bury them in there. Bury them in there and then cover them up. Exactly. Um, we don't have much time left, so I wanted to ask you most importantly about fermented foods and why it's so important for your gut health, because I am someone who is really struggling with my gut health right now, and it affects everything, your brain, your weight, your everything, right? So how, how does it help us in our guts? Oh boy, that's a big topic. You're like, I only have a minute. <laughs> Um, I mean, lots of ways. One is the fermentation starts breaking down the food. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, we can't, our body can't digest everything, the yeah. carbohydrates that mm -hmm. are in these foods, and it starts breaking it down, so it makes it more bioavailable. Okay. Um, in with the ferment also comes probiotics, which we know are really important for gut health. Yeah. Um, so digestive enzymes helps us digest our whole meal when mm -hmm. we have just a little bit of, you know, some of this with our food. So it just, there's, there's layers. <laughs> there's layers to it. Um, can I learn how to make sauerkraut in this beautiful book of yours? You can. Okay. You can make sauerkraut or any of these things. <laughs> Tenth anniversary of fermented vegetables. Kirsten, thank you so much for coming on the show, for thank teaching you. you such a cool thing that's actually approachable to the rest of us. Um, you have another thing that we might show on the, on the interwebs too. So stick around, check our website and our Instagram for that.